Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Two weeks ago, we stopped on Surah Al Inshirah, the Surah of Inshirah, the Surah of Cutting, Splitting, and Expansion. And we said Surah Al Inshirah is named Al Inshirah based on one of the verses in this Surah, which is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Alam Nashrah Laka Sadarak. Have we not expanded? If we not cut open, if we not extended or made easy for you your chest. And we said in the previous lessons and the lesson we did last time that any address that's addressed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam directly is for the Ummah. But this address in this ayah is for who specifically? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Alam Nashrah Laka Sadarak. If we're not split open your chest, nobody ever had a split chest split open except for who? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And we said ash-sharhu, the word sharh in the Arabic language has three meanings. And we said these three meanings it could also be applied to the seer of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The first meaning, the obvious meaning, is to the cutting or the splitting of the chest. So we related this ayah to the seer. And the incident of shakku sadr, the splitting of the chest of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The second meaning is al idah to make something clear and explain something. So we have books of sharh usul thalatha, explanation usul thalatha. And the last meaning is what? To make a person's chest open up that lifts anxiety, depression, and makes it easy for them to practice the deen of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So we looked at this ayah. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. This week, inshaAllah taala. We'll be looking at the second ayah and relating it to the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the second ayah is, وَوَضَعْنَا عِنْكَ وِزْرَكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَوَضَعْنَا عِنْكَ وِزْرَكَ What is the translation of وَوَضَعْنَا عِنْكَ وِزْرَكَ? What does it mean? وَوَضَعْنَا عِنْكَ وِزْرَكَ So I'll tell you what it means literally. Jayid, it means وَوَضَعْنَا عِنْكَ we have removed, we have lifted from you al wizr or wizrak, your wizr, your load. But is it a statement or is it a question? It's a question. Have we not expanded or split open your chest? Wa wada'na, and again, it's a question here. But it's a what type of a question did we say? Rhetorical question. It's a rhetorical question because wow in Arabic means and, and, and. All the wow at tawabi, they go and go back to the what? The first ayah. So it's a rhetorical question. And wa wada'na inka wizrak. If we not lifted for you or removed from you your load. And this rhetorical question is in the what? In the affirmative, meaning indeed. So the meaning of the ayah is indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has removed from you al wizr, your load. And what is meant here by al-wizr al-dhunub is sins. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and indeed, true rhetorical questions, we have lifted from you al-wizr. And al-wizr is al-dhunub, sins. Is sins. And the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has removed sins from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we find the evidences in the Quran and also in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that wa wada'na 'anka wizrak tajawazna samahna afawna it means we've forgiven we've overlooked and we've pardoned all your sins so in the Quran we find the evidence for this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pardoned overlooked and forgiven all the sins of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and one of the evidences in surah al-fath inna fatahna laka fathan mubina we've given you a clear victory لِيَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all of your previous sins and every, any sin which is to follow. Likewise, we find it in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and go back to the seerah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to pray حَتَّى تَتَفَطَّرْ أَيْ تَتَشَقَّقُ قَدَمَا Until the foot of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will split. He will pray to that extent. So Aisha radiallahu anha, in order to encourage him to be easy upon himself, we said, why do you pray so much? وَقَدْ غُفِرَ لَكَ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ مَا تَأَخَّرَ And your previous sins and the following sins to follow have been forgiven for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So the Prophet وسلم, said, Afala akun abdan shakura. Should I not be a grateful servant? In this hadith, or in this statement of Aisha radiallahu anha, where is the evidence that the previous sins of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the other sins to follow have been forgiven? Where's the evidence? Did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say this or did Aisha say it? Aisha radiallahu anha. Jayid? She said, why do you do this and your previous sins and the ones to follow have been forgiven? But before that, I said, we find this in the sunnah. In the sunnah. And I mentioned this hadith. But this statement, is this a statement of the Prophet or the same of Aisha? Statement of Aisha. So where is the proof that this is the sunnah? Jazakallah khairan, ya Abu Hanifa. Very, very important principle. Jazakallah khairan. When we say sunnah, sunnahs of three types. Al-Qawl, the statements of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sunnah. Fi'lu, the actions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is sunnah. And the silent approval of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, iqra, is sunnah. So if somebody says something for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, regarding the deen, or sharia, and he kept silent, is what? Sunnah. So the fact he didn't refute Abu Hanifa, Allah is here mentioned, this is sunnah. That all the previous sins of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Somebody then may for wonder, if this is the meaning of the ayah, and we have these supporting evidences that all his sins have been forgiven, is it possible, therefore, that the anbiya and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually sin and they have sins? Of course. Because we we'll go by the tafsir and we'll go by other ayat and the sunnah, yes, the anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they sin, including the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because why? He's a human being. All the son of Adam, they err, they make mistakes. Walakin, the issue is not the mistake. Khayru the best of those who err are those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, is a human being and the anbiya are humans and they sin. But there are certain sins that is not attributed or even permissible for the anbiya, even before prophethood. There are certain conditions of sins that the anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never have. And one of them, or the first of it is what, do you think? Shirk, barakallahu feek. Yes? After shirk, what after that then? What is a, one of the kabair that put doubt in their message? Lion, barakallahu feek. Lion. Mumtani' fi haqqil anbiya. Lion. Because if he's known to be a liar, you put doubt in his what? In his message. al kadhib wal khiyana And to be treacherous. And likewise, you mentioned all major sins. Jayid? So the anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they sin. Jayid? But the major sin, even before nubuwa, it is not there. The ulama, they say the sins of the anbiya. What does it mean, the sins, though, of the anbiya? Some of the scholars, they say the sin of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَضَعْنَ عَنْكَ وِزْرَقْ We removed from you or lifted from you your sin. They say, هَذَا قَبْلَ النُّبُوَةَ Whatever mistakes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did when? Prior to prophethood. Jayid, this is one. وَضَعْنَ عَنْكَ وِزْرَقْ Before prophethood. Some other scholars say no. Because that which is being forgiven for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is what? That we preceded and what which is to follow. They say, وَوَضَعْنَ عَنْكَ وِزْرَقْ That the sins of the Anbiya or the Prophet sallallahu that's been forgiven is خِلَافُ الْأَوْلَى خِلَافُ الْأَوْلَى To go against that which is better. Meaning that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَالْفُضَلَى Their sins, look at the sins of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They have two choices or two deeds in front of them. And both are good deeds. However, they choose a good deed over a deed which is what? Better. That's a sin for them. Subhanallah. That khilaful awla, they have two choices. One is a good deed and one is even a better deed. So when they say, we've lifted you from, your, from you, your load, your sin, is khilaful awla. To go against that which is better. And that's why the Salaf used to say, that hasanat al-abrar sayyat al That the good deeds of the righteous is the bad deeds of those who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. The good deeds of the righteous is the bad deeds of those who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet, 
we have lifted or removed from your sin is khilaf al awla leaving that which is good in the place of that which is even better so the anbiya of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al muhim is that the anbiya including the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they may err but the degree of what they err in is completely completely different jayid and like we said the important thing is not that a person sins but rather the person is what forgiven by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says alladhi anqada dhahrak that anqada way down heavily dhahrak your back al-dhahr is back and why does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention the back and he mentioned this above all other limbs in the body because if a wizard is a hamel if wizard is a load jayid is a load if you're carrying a heavy load which is the strongest muscle in your body or the strongest limb your back that's why even in weightlifting the root or the fundamental exercise in weightlifting is what deadlift because it concentrates on the what the back the back if you're lifting something heavy where you're going to feel the strain the most is where your back so if you're going to feel it in your back, you're going to feel it in other places. So it's called, Allah Ta'ala says, Prophet weigh down your back. Because anything that's heavy usually will take a strain where? On your back. So Allah Ta'ala says, Alladhi anqada dhahra. That seriously weigh down your back. Now, if, as we mentioned before, the sins of the anbiya or the fudala is khilaf al-awla and not major sins, why did this weigh down? the back of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So say, Alladhi anqada dhahra, that weighed down your back, means it disturbed you. Even though it was not much, it disturbed you. And why did it disturb them? Because to them, it's not about the magnitude of the sin. Which is why Bilal ibn Sa'd used to say, لا تنظر إلى صغر المعصية ولكن انظر إلى عظمة من عصيته do not look at the minuteness of the disobedience, but look at the greatness of the one you disobeyed. So the Anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wada, yani, anqada, he weighs down on them heavily. Because how they see Allah is different to how we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when they think about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the most minute of them, of those sins, or disobedience, he weighs down their back heavily. And here was Allah Ta'ala talking to the best of the Anbiya wa Rusul, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anqada dhahra. If this is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what should our situation be? She did not weigh down our backs heavily. She will not think night and day and ponder about our sins as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would do. Of course we should. If we truly are traders of the Akhirah, if you look at traders and businessmen, they don't sleep at night until they've done all their accounts. So if we're truly trading for the hereafter, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى تجارة? Should I not show you a trade or commerce? تُنْجِيكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ That will save you from a painful punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us what that trade would be and what the reward would be. And what's the reward? And then the ayah, يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Allah will forgive you of your sins. So, Anqada dhahrak, it weighed down the back of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not due to the magnitude of the sin. Not due to the weight of the sin, but rather their heaviness and the magnitude of how they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alladhi anqada dhahrak, that which they weigh down your back. And the believer is like this. He doesn't look at the sin, he looks at the one he's disobeying. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith in Bukhari, that the believer, he sees his sins as though he's sitting at the bottom of a mountain. And he fears that mountain is going to come down and come down upon him. That's how the believer views his sins. As for the evil liver, the disobedient one, يَرَى ذُنُوبَهُ كَالذُّبَاب he sees his sin like a fly. Waka'ala anfi that just passes his nose and he just does this. Is that nothing to him? And that's why Anas radiallahu and in his time, imagine our time today, he used to say to the people, Innakum la ta'amaluna a'amalan. You people, 
And these were good generations, not like us today. You do actions and deeds. These deeds you do is as insignificant and lighten your eyes like a hair. وَكُنَّا And as for us, فِي عَهْدِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ سَلَّمْ فِي عَهْدِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ سَلَّمْ نَعُدُّهَا مِنَ الْمُوبِقَاتِ We used to consider these things to be from the things which destroys a person. But in your eyes, it's like a hair. So, we should look at our sin as a believer looks at his sin. وَوَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وِزْرَقْ That it should weigh down heavily upon our back. لأن ترك الذنوب حياة للقلوب. That leaving off a sin is the life of the heart. And when you see a person feeling guilty, feeling bad about a particular sin, it means his heart is still got what life. When a person no longer feels guilty, your heart is dead. Your heart is dead. And when you feel bad about a sin, it weighs down upon you. These are good signs. الذي أنقذ ظهرك that we weigh down your back heavily طيب and from the رحمة of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Allah تعالى says to Allah here that الذي أنقذ ظهرك that which weigh down your what your back but not physically metaphorically so from the mercy of Allah عز وجل is that sins do not have a physical weight weight because the Salaf, and these were the ulama of the Salaf used to say, that لو كان للذنوب الثقل ما استطعت أن أمشي If sins had a weight or volume, I will not be able to walk. From the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that sins do not have an odor or fragrance. One of the Salaf used to say, لو كان للذنوب ريح ما استطعت أن تقري أو تتقرب مني أو ما استطاع أحد أن يقترب مني. That if sins had a sins, you, you will not be able to اقترب or nobody will be able to even come close to me. If sins had an odor. From the رحمة of Allah عز وجل, that these sins, they don't have a physical weight. Well, metaphorically they do. Spiritually they do. They have a weight. دا أنقض ظهرك. After this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ And we mentioned this, and this is related to the seer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Allah ta'ala has raised the mention of, or the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mujahid rahimahullah ta'ala said, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ When we look at the seer of the Prophet sallallahu and acts of sharia, the meaning of we've raised for you a mention is, مَا أو لا أذكر إلا ذكرت معي. I am never mentioned except in most cases you're mentioned with me. قتادة سا رفع الله سبحانه وتعالى ذكره في الدنيا والآخرة. Allah has raised his mention. Not only in the dunya that when Allah has mentioned, He's also mentioned. And when is Allah mentioned and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is mentioned? أذان. Every time the أذان is made, وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله. Likewise in صلاة التحيات التشهد. We mentioned the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. جيد. Likewise in every single act of ibadah. Do we mention the Prophet وسلم in every act of ibadah? Do we remember him in every act of ibadah? نعم. Why? Because the conditions of worship are to sincerity and to follow the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. So no matter what act of worship you're doing, there's always a mention of who the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Even if you don't mention him verbally. جيد. But this is not only in the dunya. He said, وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ And in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised him and raised his mention. And how is this in the akhirah? From the example of the akhirah, when the mu'addin makes the adhan, one of the du'a we make, Allahumma rabba hadhi da'wati tamat ila, the part of the du'a, we ask Allah ta'ala to give the Prophet some what? Al-maqam al-mahmood. Only for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that loves the station in the hereafter. Al-maqam al-mahmood. Likewise, وَرَفْعِ ذِكْرِهِ From the raising of the Prophet in the Akhirah is that the dua of the Anbiya Yawm Al-Qiyamah is what? Sallim, Sallim. Oh Allah, deliver us in peace. And no one will intercede, not Adam, not Nuh, alayhi salam, not the Anbiya Yawm Al-Qiyamah due to the severity of the issue except for who? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first to intercede. So Allah Ta'ala has raised his mention for dunya wal-akhirah. And that's why he not find a khatib in this dunya. 
or a person who does shahada. Illa, it mentions the Prophet ﷺ, even to enter Islam. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. As though they're one thing. Because you need to have ikhlas in la and follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa rufa'na laka dhikrak also means that there's no name that is mentioned or is more popular than the name Muhammad. So, the name Muhammad are many in the ummah. And likewise, rufa'na laka dhikrak is the love that the people have naturally for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in their hearts. Even the most evil of the Muslims. When these people draw these cartoons, say bad things about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you see what happens you know, all over the world, how people react to it, even people that are not really practicing Muslim, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is raised, is mentioned in the hearts of the Muslims. And I end with this, that once in Tunisia, there's a brother, he's a Palestinian brother, he was working in Tunisia. And Tunisia, unfortunately, is one of those countries whereby in certain places there's licenses for alcohol in certain places, just like some other Muslim countries. So he was on call. As a doctor, sometimes you're on call. You're not really working, but they could call you anytime. So one o'clock in the morning, he was called to come to the hospital. Emergency, you have to come. He went there one o'clock in the morning. When he got to the hospital, blood everywhere. Serious injuries, you know. These people were in a bar and they've been fighting. And one of the people I had to operate on was severely injured. He was drenched in blood. And he said, SubhanAllah, what happened? How did you, why did you fight to this extent? He said, kelp nabi. This dog insulted the Prophet. Even though he was drinking, he was drunk. And he's in a bar. Allah raised that in his heart for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Next week, inshallah ta'ala, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ And we relate that again to the seerah of the Prophet sallam and to our lives, that whatever the hardship will be, there is always, with hardship comes what? Is? No. Two or more or three, the ease is always more than the, the hardship. Always more than the hardship. Yes? And that's why Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, used to say, that al-usr, lan yaglib usrain. We'll never defeat two ease, usrain. We'll never defeat two ease. So it's two eases and one hardship. Inshallah, we'll stop here. Uh, Before we begin, inshallah ta'ala, again, a note to the sisters upstairs, and I've had to now elevate my voice or raise my voice a little bit to please, inshallah ta'ala, maintain silence, if they can, please, the sisters. Because first and foremost, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ This masajid is for what? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is the purpose of the masjid first and foremost? لِعِبَادَةِ The worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So some people, or majority of people, have come here for the purpose of what? Ibadah. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that worship which you do specifically in the masjid is usually what? As-salah. The prayer. Which is why if you're reciting the Quran and somebody's praying sunnah, Yes, a voluntary prayer. And you're next to them and you're reciting in a voice which is audible. It's not even permissible to disturb them with the recitation of the Quran. What about other than the recitation of the Quran? What about other than this? From vain talks or worldly talks in the masjid. Secondly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us in the Quran that whenever you hear the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being recited, although some say this is in salah, that you should listen, pay attention, turhamun, in order for you to receive what? Mercy. Likewise, one of the purposes of the masjid is to come there to learn. I know some brothers and some sisters have come here to learn, and many a times, weekly almost, the sisters complain about the sister's side. And it's really, we've spoken about it many a time, it's unbecoming, it's not proper, it's not from the etiquette of the masjid, even for the men likewise, to raise our voices in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum.